Hello YouTube, I'm David with the David West channel. I appreciate you joining me back on my channel again. Beautiful landscape behind me. I like the way that the rising sun, it's 9 a.m. in the morning, and the shadows illuminate the terraces on the pasture across the creek. So I hope that video turns out reasonably well. This morning I want to make a little char cloth. Stick with me, we'll get started. Judging by the burn marks on the side of the can, I would have rather seen it up higher than that, so I'm sure that the t-shirt has shrunk up some, but why don't I take and close that flap, because there'll still be plenty of uh, vent around the edge of this, and try, hopefully, contain more of the heat and get a hotter burn on it. No. The lack of burn marks still concerns me. I think I'm going to turn it upside down. Just in case the top of that t-shirt didn't get enough heat to char. I bet the top of that t-shirt gets some heat now. 
and now that that yeah it needed that so now that that flammable gas can come out the bottom it can ignite so there was a lot more charring that needed to happen Right. In total, it's like 20 minutes later, and I'm going to take this off and leave it upside down so that that flap on the lid is face down and sealing off until it can cool off. But uh, one of my first questions are answered already about this popcorn char tin being able to withstand all this heat, because that's very thin metal. I think it's even thinner than... Uh, the can that a gallon of green beans comes in, like the cans that I make my hobo stoves out of. So I was concerned if it was going to distort and the lid pop off, which it didn't. But uh, when it completely cools off, we'll look more at the metal and see how it withstood that intense flame. There's dimples everywhere there was a jet hitting the bottom of the can, but the metal held up all right. And then there's a nice ring of soot on the top, which was the last surface in contact with the flames. Lots of tars and deposits on that lid. And many of those deposits fell down on top of the t-shirt. But, as thin as that char tin was, I see no damage to it. It could be used again. Let's open it up and see what it looks like. Oh, uh, it held a bunch of heat on the inside. Let me see if I can uh, snuff that back out. Oh, that's a shame. Maybe we didn't do too much damage. I'm going to let it sit there for about a half hour and we'll try it again. <clears throat> Alright, let's try this again. I just ate some breakfast. So, I guess it's been about a half hour. Man, I, I still feel a little heat on this side, but then the sun's on that side. Hmm. Let's take a chance. Let's take a chance that it's, that it's cooled off and it's out.
<laughs> well, I guess it's out. I don't feel any hot spots on it. There it is. Kind of cool, isn't it? Now, it is a little smoky in here where it was touching the bottom of the can. But overall, did a pretty good job. Let's look at the back side of it. Ain't bad. Seems how I almost destroyed it by opening the can up too soon. But since this sleeve is trying to tear off, let's go ahead and try a piece of this, see if it's going to work. Let me uh, set this out of the way so it won't accidentally catch a spark. It's lit. Can't really see it in this bright sun, can you? Let's try it one more time. So this was the sleeve. Let's pick another spot. something that's recognizable like that collar right there. Let's try it. <laughs> Hi, Tom. So, that's what we ended up with on the char tin. Looks like it could be used again. Well, you can't really see it the way the sun is. And all kinds of t-shirt material for char cloth. Just wanted to check it out. <laughs> I appreciate you joining me on this experiment, and we'll catch you on the next one.